Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income. From Welcome students, to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. And professionals. Today, I'm going to be talking about an article that made me absolutely sick. Uh, it's in the article itself is in Brookings on Brookings.edu. It's called "Why the Dentist with One Million in Student Loan Debt Spells Trouble for Federal Loan Programs." Uh, it was originally picked up, originally written, I think, in the Wash, Wall Street Journal. But uh, the crux of it is that um, this dentist, one of 101 people, owe more than a million dollars in student loan debt to a single person. And I just, it just, you know, my jaw kind of dropped and, and I wanted to read and kind of understand uh, how that, that could happen. And it, it really comes down to the limits, that there are no limits on how much you can borrow. And he's not leading a bad life. Uh, he apparently has, makes 255000 a year, quarter of a million. He has a $400,000 house and drives a Tesla. But he only has to pay 1500 a month on his student loans, uh, and then his student loans will actually be $2 million in 25 years. And his student loans, I guess the thing that just kind of blew me away was that his student loans grow by $130 a day. That just is insane to me. So I just, I wanted to bring in somebody that could talk intelligently about student loans uh, and then the madness that kind of is going on with uh, how, do you, how do you figure out the best way to repay. Now, before I go to that, I want to kind of speak to the people that are going to be applying to pharmacy schools. Uh, the early admissions deadline, I think, is early September. I want to say September 4th or something like that. And... I want to kind of give you the pros and cons of early admission. Uh, I think I'm going to do a full podcast episode for when I'm uh, away on family vacation. Uh, But the kind of two things that I want you to take away is that the first thing that I think most pharmacy students or most people going into pharmacy school fear is not getting accepted. You know, the fear of rejection seems to trump everything. Well, a U.S. News article had that more than 50 programs offered early assurance, uh, and this is in 2017. I just counted. There's 120 schools that are now offering early assurance. So that means that you are locked in. That is the one school you can apply to, and that is the only school you can go to if they accept you. Now, why is this good? Well, it's good because you know you're in. You don't have to worry about that. You can get everything set up for the next year. Why might this not make a lot of sense in an environment where we're having a bit of a crisis with these student loans and the student loan debt? Well, what happens is that if you are so scared of not getting accepted and then you just take the first one, then it means that you haven't seen how much it would have cost to go to other schools. So there's no real market there. You don't don't know how much you would have paid. And who usually applies for early assurance are the A students who have the confidence and the grades to to get in at a very high level. But that means that the A students might actually be paying a lot more than the B minus C students who, because maybe they're not sure if they're going to get in, apply to many, many more schools. So I'll talk in depth about that. I don't want to belabor that this time, uh, but I think I'll talk in depth about that the next time, kind of a, a plan for applying to pharmacy school. As I've been looking at the FarmCast numbers and the FarmCast website, there are some things that pharmacy schools have done in the survey that are absolutely wrong. So the FarmCast data is in many ways uh, completely unreliable, especially as it comes to a uh, number of students that they expect to admit and then the number of uh, students that will actually enroll. And that's the one of the most important kind of markers of 
is this a top, not a top quality school, is this a school that many people want to go to? So if somebody gets an acceptance to Harvard, most people are going to take that acceptance. And the reasons they're not going to might have been the money or something like that, but most people are going to take that. So if you have a really high number of people that take the acceptance, then that's saying, okay, well, most of them really, really wanted to go here. This was their first choice. If, however, the yield is much, much lower, for example, you know, it's for every five people they accept, only one person takes it, then that's a school that people don't necessarily have as their top choice. So some things I'll talk about in the next episode. I don't want to belabor that. Uh, let's talk about the mothership. Uh, so just a couple of uh, episodes, but some very important ones. Uh, the Pharmacy Future Leaders, Pharmacy Practice Experience, uh, Ippies, and uh, I think Haley Ward with Joanna Pio, they talked about hospital Ippies. Uh, so if you're in your early years in pharmacy school, I think that was pretty valuable to, to kind of better get an insight of what's going on on the inside. Uh, and then Aaron Albert had an episode, Mid-Career Fellowships, with founder of ProFellow, Dr. Vicki Johnson, uh, and talking about how... Just as many people are like, well, I can't go back to do a residency, which is kind of not true, uh, maybe a fellowship would be something that would be a choice uh, rather than something like that. So again, uh, a good episode uh, as well from Aaron L. Albert. Uh, Who's coming up this week? Uh, This week I have uh, two guests, uh, and then uh, I've kind of gone to this three-a-week format rather than four. Uh, It's it's a it's where I feel comfortable, uh, but I may increase it if I if I get some um, if I get some more interviews. I may go back to four a week, but for right now it's three a week. Uh, the first guest will be on Monday, and that's Eric Christensen, who uh, started a new podcast. Uh, if you don't know his name, you probably know Med Ed One Hundred One, and he's got a new podcast, Real Life Pharmacology. So where I teach uh, pharmacology, really P one P two year. Uh, he kind of takes the baton there and talks about P3, P4 year case studies uh, as a clinical practitioner. Uh, and he's a Minnesota grad uh, with a ton of great experience and a great content. So I highly refer his uh, Real Life Pharmacology podcast. Uh, then someone I heard on Bigger Pockets Money podcast, uh, gosh, I want to say it was just a week ago, uh, Travis Hornsby. And he talked about uh, his... Uh, path with his wife who's a physician and how she had student debt and he didn't and then it all went all the way to him creating a company uh, to help uh, people pay off student loans and uh, I've got a video that he made for me uh, on my Tony Farm D YouTube channel if you want to check it out but he talks about in that video uh, how to maybe assess uh, student loans and he's responding to a Dave Ramsey video. So Dave Ramsey made a YouTube video, 100,000 downloads, uh, that kind of uh, told this person who's having 245,000 in student loan debt, don't even think about buying a house, get the loans paid off, and then it's time to, to buy a house. And in that YouTube video, he goes, uh, Travis Hornsby takes the time to to go through a spreadsheet and kind of give a little more of an option rather than this is it. But, you know, people that watch Dave Ramsey or listen to Dave Ramsey kind of like that, you know, he's just like, this is what you should do. And, and, you know, he doesn't say, well, you could do this or you could do that. It's just like this, this is the way. So I definitely recommend you check out that YouTube video. Uh, Thanks, guys, for uh, listening again. um, If you put pharmacy leadership now in Google, uh, I am actually the fourth hit out of 281 million. So that was kind of cool to see. Uh, Again, uh, TLDR Pharmacy had the new FDA approval, Tregarzo, which is an HIV medication with a completely uh, different mechanism of action than we've seen uh, in anything else. So uh, kind of cool that we've got something uh, new uh, in that category. Uh, Jackie Boyle uh, put a, a blog post up, uh, the o- this could be the only thing holding you back, uh, and she's on now, all her blog posts are on the happyfarmd.com, uh, and she talks a little bit about imposter syndrome, she calls it something a little bit different, uh, but uh, I always love her blog posts because they're one page, full of value, and done. So 
I definitely recommend you check that out. Um, I was listening to your financial pharmacist podcast, the last two, and we had Dalton Fabian on, uh, I don't remember if it was pharmacy leaders podcast or pharmacy future leaders, but, uh, he talked about, uh, his road and, and how it had a little bump in it and how he made the best of it with, uh, computer science and, uh, And he talks in this YFP episode about a graduate program that he's going to. I'm going to guess it's the Coursera one uh, because I think Georgia Tech does have a master's degree for about 10 grand. Uh, They've managed to just take all the fluff out of it and uh, just give, you know, a very valuable uh, degree for uh, about $10,000 if I remember right. Uh, And he talks about his student loan debt and kind of his plans, and they don't have any consumer debt. Uh, I think he's newly married-ish, and kind of how they're uh, approaching their future. So that was kind of cool, episode 48. And then episode 49 really got the real estate bug back. Um, Should I pay off my house early or should I invest? And, And I kind of took a look at mine, and you know, I'm, I'm kind of at the point where if I wanted to, uh, I could ma- be pretty aggressive with uh, paying down the house. And and so uh, just to kind of recap really quickly, uh, I have a primary home with my wife and then I have a, a rental property. Uh, right now it has a 33 or 34% position, uh, maybe 40% uh, loan to value, I think. Did I get it right? So 40% of it's paid off, 60% I still owe, uh, and uh, I could probably pay that off in a couple years. But is that the best option? And I just I just like having money in the bank. I like knowing that I can pay uh, for any emergencies that come up. I like knowing that I have uh, rent, if, if nobody's you know renting it, although the, the tenants are coming back next year. Um, you know, I, I just like having money. So, uh, In the Ask Tim and Tim, should I pay off my house or should I invest? And my choice was to invest, but not in securities. Uh, I really don't understand securities. Uh, I did put, you know, the the IRA max, which is like 5,500 in there uh, this year, but uh, I'm definitely going to start looking at houses. And uh, I thought about looking at another house in my area, but I think I'm going to look in... Uh, Baltimore 21230, uh, 21224, or Tempe, Arizona 85281, 85284. Both places I've lived, both places I know really well. Uh, and I have, in both cases, I would have a real estate agent that uh, I know very well and that can go get the house for me without me actually having to uh, fly out there. And they're people that I trust. Um, and so, uh, in terms of investing, you know, I, I think a lot of times we, we worry about the details, uh, but if I've got somebody who's more experienced than I am, and this person has 17 years of experience as a real estate agent, uh, I trust her judgment. Uh, so when, when we're talking a deal, we're talking numbers, we're looking at pictures, uh, but, you know, I don't actually, I probably, the first time I'll probably see the house uh, might be after my first tenant's been there a year. That might be the case. So... Uh, anyway, my uh, answer to the Tim and Tim, should I pay off my house early or invest? My decision was to invest. Uh, even though I think we might be at the top of the market, um, I still think putting in, you know, even 20% and having that money come in from somebody else, that additional cash flow, uh, just it just, it's something I understand. I understand real estate. Uh, Richard's Monu- uh, RX Radio, I think I talked about this last time, but Richard's monumental podcast inter- interview on building brand, uh, and this advice came from Blair Tielemeyer too, you absolutely want to be known for something. So I think people know me as the podcast guy or the leadership podcast guy or the guy that wrote a book uh, and he's doing really well or the guy. But honestly, if I were to describe what my you know expertise is, my expertise is turning muddled and difficult nonfiction uh, content into something that is audio and very accessible. So we'll see. My audio book, Memorizing Pharmacology Mnemonics, it's still in review. It's been a couple days. I watch it every single day. I watch it twice a day. Uh, so hopefully that will be successful. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, working with Mike Lentz, uh, who is uh, the voice uh, talent that did that. He's a pharmacist out in 
uh, New York, and we'll have two episodes with him. Uh, he's just really great stuff. Uh, so uh, really excited to bring him on the podcast in a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, let's see. Talk to your pharmacist podcast. I think Blair, I think I'd mentioned that. She had had an episode, I want to say, two weeks ago. But I always love hearing Blair Telemeyer and hearing that story of how she had her you know, back against the wall financially and uh, came out to be an entrepreneur who is absolutely killing it. Uh, Kevin Yee. Uh, I really liked his video, Don't Let the Fear of Success Hold You Back. I always love listening to him. He's such a straight shooter and uh, really just kind of is very transparent, uh, puts himself out there, uh, and I uh, love hearing uh, his um, his YouTube channel. And did he break five? Yep, 5,008 subscribers. So Kevin Yee, congrats on breaking 5,000. Uh, and then uh, Brian Fung um, uh, talks about why he started uh, on YouTube, so I uh, also recommend him. Paul Tran, come on, man, make a video. It's been almost a month. So I just, just some guy that I followed a lot and uh, referred a lot because uh, I have so many pre-pharmacy people. So again, the, the YouTube video that uh, I mentioned, I may not have uh, actually given you the title, but it's called Pharmacy School Student Loans forgiveness and other options a 240,000 uh, case study and it's on Tony Farm D uh, YouTube you can find it as the first video there all right well have a good weekend hopefully some of this content is valuable to you uh, as always it's easiest to hit me up on Facebook Messenger uh, but you can uh, Tony Farm D1 uh, but you can always reach me, my email, A-A-G-U-E-R-R-A at dmac.edu uh, as well. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll hear from Eric Christensen, then we'll hear from Travis Hornsby, and then I will uh, have a pre-recorded uh, video. I'll be on vacation for a week, uh, but there will be uh, episodes at least three days a week uh, that time. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach. With over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. In print, ebook, and audiobook. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag hashpharmacyleaders. 